Good morning and welcome to worship with the St. Mark's and St. John's community. It's great to have you all with us today on this, the fourth Sunday in Lent. We come together this morning in the name of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today oh praise and thanks to god the father now be given the son and him who reigns with them in highest heaven Almighty and ever-living God, you invite us ever deeper into your world, your people, your Lent. May this time be one of outward focus, seeking you and those we often ignore. Help us live a Lent focused on freedom, generosity, and encounter. Give us hearts hungry to serve you and those who need what we have to give. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you, all hearts are open, all desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson is Numbers 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3, and then 17 to 22. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. 
Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those who re he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and the south. Some were sick through their sinful ways and because of their iniquities endured affliction. They loathed any kind of food and they drew, drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them, and delivered them from destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind, and let them offer thanksgiving sacrifices, and, let, and tell of his deeds with songs of joy. The second lessons, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those of us who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of the, our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly place in Jesus Christ, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. This is the gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Hear what the Spirit is saying. the Lord my soul and bless God's holy name bless the Lord my soul who leads me into life bless the Lord my soul Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts on this Sunday morning be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you made it. You made it to church an hour early this morning. And so I'm grateful, grateful for that. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to join you this morning and talk to you a little bit about uh, the Gospel of John. 
and um, how it this particular passage is set up um, with the backdrop of numbers, which um, Deb read for us this morning, the Old Testament passage of uh, Moses and the serpent. One of the things that you've heard me uh, talk about before is um, how good news in the gospel um, sometimes does not seem like good news to, um, to some people. Um, and it's not intended as necessarily good news for those folks. Jesus had um, kind of his, his authority was all about changing the trajectory of history, changing the direction that it looked like human beings um, had been on and were continuing to kind of um, move along towards. And that's, that's, um, that's that whole idea or that whole um, time was um, to look at human beings as um, not doing um, acts of kindness for one another um, at kind of the, the lowest level. But um, even beyond that, having uh, systems that were created that strategically oppressed people and held um, people in uh, places of extreme poverty in some cases, um, didn't promote um, kind of wellness and, um, and healing for others. Um, and so we see Jesus's life of healing uh, kind of behind uh, this, um, this text of John 3. The verses that weren't read um, before verse 14 uh, sets the, this passage of God so loved the world up. And that is, this is a whole conversation with Nicodemus. Jesus is still in Jerusalem at this point. He hasn't left yet. And he um, encounters Nicodemus, who is um, in kind of the Pharisee class. And at that point, and, and it's at night, which is particularly important um, to the setting of the story. And so he is enlightening uh, Nicodemus at this time about what his reason for being um, in the world is and why God sent him into the world. And so if you were a person listening to John's gospel and you were in the kind of down and out group, if you weren't a Sadducee, if you weren't a Pharisee, if you weren't um, one of those religious leaders or leaders in the um, Roman empire um, and you were listening to this text, um, that was good news for you. It was good news, it was light in your darkness because that's who Jesus came to save. If you were one of those other classes, um, then that is kind of the darkness that Jesus is talking about, but it's not just to kind of recognize and describe that, it's Jesus came to transform that, right? Transform those systems into places of light because those people are being held um, and kind of imprisoned in a sense too, um, in those in those lives, and and um, and that's important for us to kind of keep in mind as as a community of today, and how the world looks and who we're called to be, in in um, in the world in which we live, in the community in which we live, and as individuals. One of the things that um, a a couple more things. One is um, that kind of the saying of, are we human beings on a spiritual journey or are we spiritual beings on a human journey? Let me repeat that. Are we human beings on a spiritual journey or are we spiritual beings on a human journey? If we have the light of Christ, which I believe we all do within us, then we can live our lives as spiritual beings that just happen to be on a human journey, right? Because we have the capacity within ourselves um, because of the gifts that God has given us already and continues to give us to shine that light um, 
in, in a world where sometimes there is, there is darkness. The other thing that I wanted to mention this morning is what that means for, for our community and a community of, uh, that is continually striving to work, to be um, Christ in the world. And um, I come back to this poem that uh, I actually stumbled upon when I first came to St. Mark's and St. John's. And I remember reading this at the very first um, annual meeting when I, was, when I came. And, um, and so I wanna share it with you now because I think it's, um, we have um, continued to live into this vision. And the name of the poem is In Search of a, of a Round Table. Concerning the why and how and what and who of ministry, one image keeps surface, surfacing, a table that is round. It will take some sawing to be a round table, some refining and designing, some redoing and rebirthing of narrow long churching. Can painful, can, can painful be for people and tables? It would mean no daisying and throning for but one king is there and he was a foot washer at table no less. And what of narrow long ministers when they confront around table people after years of working up the table to finally sit at its head only to discover that the table has been turned round. They must be loved into roundness for God has called a people not them and us. Them and us are unable to gather round for at a round table, there are no sides and all are invited to wholeness and to food. At one time, our narrow long churches were built to resemble the cross, but it does no good for buildings to do so if lives do not. Round tabling means no preferred seating, no first and last, not better, and no corners for the least of these. Round tabling means being with, a part of, together, and one. It means room for the spirit and gifts and disturbing profound peace for all. We can no longer prepare for the past. We will and must and are called to be church. And if he calls for other than round table, we are bound to follow leaving the sawdust and chips designed and redesigned behind in search of and in presence of the kingdom that is his and not ours in search of a round table. Amen. We confess our sins this morning as we say together, most merciful God, whose son Jesus Christ was tempted in every way, yet without sin, we confess before you that we have sinned, we have hungered after that which does not satisfy, we have compromised with evil, we have doubted your power to protect us, forgive our lack of faith, have mercy on our weakness, restore in us such love and trust that we may walk in your ways and delight in doing your will. By water and the Holy Spirit, God has given you new birth. And through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. Almighty God, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. And the people said, Amen. We join together as we say a Lenten affirmation of faith. We believe that our lives are held within the encircling love of God, who knows our names and recognizes our deepest needs. We believe that Christ is the divine child of the living God, and that Christ's grace is like living waters that can never be exhausted. We believe in the birthing, renewing, enabling spirit of God who yearns over our welfare as a mother yearns for her child. We believe that God is in the arid desert as well as in green pastures 
and that hard times and disciplines are also loving gifts. We believe that our journey has a purpose and a destination and that our path leads to human glory. We cannot yet imagine. We believe that in the church, we are fellow pilgrims on the road and that we are called to love one another as God loves us. This is our faith and we are humbled to profess in Jesus the Christ. Prayers of the people. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Good shepherd, within your embrace, we are safe and secure. Within your embrace, we know that we are prosperous in your sight. Within your embrace, we feel the warmth of family and belonging. Within your embrace, we glow and are nurtured together as one flock, the people of your pasture, under your loving care and protection. Come, let us bow down before the Lord, our maker. Good shepherd, within your embrace, we find comfort and healing. We bring to you those who are weak or struggling with physical, mental, or spiritual health. We pray especially this day for Michael and Shar, Randy, Wendy, Sam, Anna, Sarah, Kath, Steve, Shamara, Virginia, and Polly. We pray for Corrine's family and ask that she may know your love as she struggles with drug, with drug addiction. For Jean's wife and son who have tested positive for COVID. For Matthew's family, his neighbors, and himself. We lift Sequentia up to you that you may bless her and give her peace. In silence, we pray for the healing of our own bodies, minds, and spirit. Come, let us bow down before the Lord, our maker. Good shepherd, within your embrace, we find justice. We bring to you the brave voices who cry out for freedom. Those prepared to stand up and be heard without counting the cost. We pray for those who have been imprisoned or tortured for their race, color, caste, or faith. For all Christians who have taken up the cross and know its weight and pain. Come, let us bow down before the Lord, our maker. Good shepherd, within your embrace, we find peace. We bring to you those orphaned, crippled, or dispossessed by war, for refugees wandering this earth in search of a home, for all victims of strife and warfare, and for all those who have dedicated their lives for the search for peace and reconciliation. Come, let us bow down before the Lord, our maker. Gracious God, make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I would invite you, if you have a candle, um, at your home that you would like to light, and then um, you can show it um, on your camera as we uh, pray in solidarity and listen to Andy. compassion a love that's never failing let mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness the kindness of a savior 
the hope of nations, the hope of nations, and Savior, he can move the mountains, my God is mighty to say, he is mighty to say forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, and fill my life again. Give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Yes, I surrender. And Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave shine your light in let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen king jesus shine your light in let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen King, Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Peace of the Lord be with you always. I want a church with a crowded table and a place by the altar for everyone. Let us take on the world while we're fed and able and bring us back together when the day is done. If we want a garden, we're going to have to sow the seed, plant a little happiness, let the roots run deep. If it's love that we give, then it's love that we reap if we want a garden we're gonna have to sow the seed i want a church with a crowded table and a place by the altar for everyone let us take on the world while we're fed and able bring us back together when the day is done. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things. By your power and love, you continue to deliver your people from bondage. Thwart the designs of evil, show the way through the wilderness, turn hardship into righteousness, and reveal your hand upholding the just. You came among us to feed and heal and teach. 
to confound the haughty, to challenge the wrong-hearted, and in all these things, to give hope to those who long for peace. You give us words when we have none. You fill us with vision when we have the most need. You give us voice to proclaim our faith in every hour. Be our guide and teacher today and always. We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May you never become cynical, and may you never become jaded. May you never lose heart, and may you never lose faith. May you see light and good in everyone. May you remain open to the wonder and mystery of life. May you stand firm in the assault of the power shielded with the wisdom of God and a good sense of humor. And may you stay rooted in hope and the wisdom, love and grace of God strengthen you to be God's hands and heart in this world of ours and the blessing of God Almighty, our creator, redeemer and sustainer stay with you on this Sunday morning and remain with you always. Christ whose glory fills the skies, Christ the true, the only light, Son of righteousness arise, Triumph o'er the shades of night, day spring from on high be near, day star in my heart appear. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>